what I what? Why are you here today, man? Why am I here? Because I am presenting a proclamation to Howard on behalf of the city of Philadelphia, signed by the mayor, which I am proud to give to him. Yeah, yeah, trophy. Let me see that. And a trophy. Open it up so we can see it. That will declare him the greatest radio personality in Philadelphia radio history. Of course. Now, how did you get to do this? How did I get to do this? Yeah. Because the dopes at YSP couldn't. <laughs> It is, it is, Howard Stern it's an honored privilege for me to give this to the king of all media. Uh, Gary, what am I doing? Am I bringing in Captain Jenks at this point? Captain Jenks is here? Yeah, he made some sort of phony phone call, or I don't know what he did. Pop up full high. What am I doing? I see someone on hold. What am I doing? Tell me. Captain Jenks. Captain Jenks. Here he is, Captain Jenks. And who is this? Oh, I see. Get rid of him. Who was that little, uh... Actually, Howard, uh, you, know, you know I've been in a bunch of car accidents in the past six months, right? No. Well, actually, I was in two major car accidents where I, I almost died. Really? Yeah. Well, good for you. Oh, you look fine. Yeah, you look great. Correct. Well, you know... Then... What do you mean, you almost... Are you being serious? Yeah. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Like, just... Were you driving? You know, he drove one night into... You know where the train trestle is? You yeah. Under it? He drove into it. You drove into a train trestle head on? Of, took it out of the ground, Howard. Really? Yes. Were you drunk? No, no, I wasn't drunk, but... At you least know. you'd have an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just drive that badly. Yeah. How could you be such a bad driver? <laughs> I don't know, this year has been... Maybe because you're so short that you can't see Can over the dashboard. Can you see over the steering wheel? In, in, in some cars, yeah. <laughs> what were you driving? I was driving a Subaru Brat. Was Very, it yours? Uh, yeah, my brother gave it to me. A and, small car. And uh, you, you reached the brake pedal? Yeah. <laughs> So, and you, I don't understand. Was it night? Um, it was like about six thirty, seven o'clock at night. All right, yeah. so it was dark out. It's starting to get dark. Yeah. And you drove into a. I took it out of the ground. Wow. You couldn't see it. So I could. Well, it, not that I couldn't see it. I don't actually know what happened. I, I, it's all kind of like. Were uh, you falling asleep? Yeah, probably a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Why you've been working hard, making phony phone calls? Yes. yes. This is the guy who started all the phony phone call things. He's featured in my book rather prominently. <laughs> and this guy, the guy I brought with me, Fran, he gave me his car. To come up here, yeah. To bring him, to bring him up here. And what'd you do to that? Nothing. It's it, the transmission's going on it now. But, what was yeah. the second car accident? Uh, I got another car as soon as I got you know got in the train accident or you know the accident with the train and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> smashed that car. It's what? been a bad six months for and me. And how did you car. smash that car? Uh, I was coming off a of 476, the blue route, and I just like missed the turn and, and should have made a left, and I went straight. <laughs> And you went what into was what? In front of you? <laughs> you smashed right into the wall. And I mean, it was a big car, too. I'm a small guy, so it was just like. Did that. you go through the windshield? Nah. What about on the first one? First one, my head went through the windshield, yeah. Really? And I crossed the steering wheel the whole nine oh, yards. Wow. wow. Yeah. Good Lord was with me both them times. He's like an evil Knievel of phone callers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, how you don't know. And maybe it's a new career for you, just crashing into stuff. Yeah, you're like. Uh, What's and, that, Super Dave? And when the, yeah, except you're the real thing. And when uh, the cops come, do they say to you, what's wrong with you, Mr. Jenks? What, uh, what happened? Well, the first, well the, the first time the cop came, I had actually got out of the car, walked over to the payphone and called like a friend of mine. Do you tell them you're Captain Jenks? The cops? Yeah. They, they, they recognize you. They recognize you. Well, they knew my name. They did? Yeah. No well, kidding. Well, my town, the town I live in, North Wales, is a very small town. I and, and everyone knows you're Captain Jenks from the radio. Well, kind of, yeah. It's a I real see. small town. Really? A real small town. It must be. They, they know, know I'm you. Captain Jenks. I don't know whether it's from the radio or just because I'm a dope, but... <laughs> you know, you're always <laughs> crashing into things. Yeah, exactly. You know, Howard, my job is I listen to the problems of the whack pack, but I want to yeah. tell you what you need to know. He's had a really awful year. His record company folded, so his record never got out. He had to go back and work a regular job. At a gas station. Regular yeah. job. That's not a regular job. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's like a, that's a, a job you get when you're in high school. Yeah. But, but you know pumping he, gas. You know what he did do? He, uh, he ran into Chubby Checker one day. Yeah. yeah. What is I ran into <laughs> Chubby Checker. Doesn't Were you live driving? In. No, I was. I was. I was. Is he yeah, I was driving too? to work one morning. Yeah. And I saw Chubby Checker. Well, I didn't know it was Chubby Checker at first, but I saw a car pulled over in the side of the road. Yeah. And the cops were all around him, and I like looking at him. He lives not too far. Were from they beating him with sticks? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I recognized him, and I got out of the car. I pulled my right. car over on the way to work. Yeah. And I went up to him, and I said, I said, yeah. I was like, you know, are you Howard Stern fan? You know, Howard's going to be going out to Chicago in a couple months for the man cow funeral. Would you, you know, would would you go? out there and sing the you know the fist instead of the twist yeah and he's like get away from me how are you talking to me get away from me can't you see i'm in the middle of a car accident here i said like, well i was just in two in the past six months it didn't phase me none right yeah. if someone asked you to appear you would have done it yeah. oh man any point right of well, course but uh yeah are you going to be at the uh, philadelphia book signing 
Yeah, well, give me a break. Absolutely. Well, I want to welcome the king of all media. Right, account. of course. Howard, that's, why don't we lead up to why Tom yeah. is here. This is all him. He put this together. Yeah. That's yes. just on our phone right now. This is uh, Susan Seagal. Susan Siegel, yes. Of Mayor Rendell's Office of Philadelphia. Yes. Wow. Well, look at that. You put that together, Captain James? I put it together, Howard, because well, you you're the king of all media. I don't know what it is, but the fact that he got someone from the mayor's office I'm to call in. I'm surprised anybody's on the phone. And what did you do? You called Susan? Yes, I called Susan. She's a real big fan of the show, as a lot of people are over at the mayor's office, and I asked Susan... Uh, Susan, is that you? Hi, Howard. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to speak to you. Nice and, to speak to you. And it's uh, certainly an honor to speak to someone in the mayor's office. Yes. What's going to happen here now is, uh, Tom, why don't you hand it to Howard? Okay. Susan's going to read a proclamation from the mayor himself. Wow. Whoa. Go ahead, Susan. Okay. Great. Whereas, Howard Stern has been broadcasting in Philadelphia since August 18th, 1986. And whereas Howard Stern became the number one morning radio show in the city of Brotherly Love in May 1990 and continues to be the number one morning radio show in Philadelphia, and whereas Howard Stern has made thousands of Philadelphians smile and even laugh during their daily morning commute, therefore I, Edward G. Rendell, mayor of the city of Philadelphia, do hereby proclaim Saturday, December 9th, 1995, as Howard Stern Day in Philadelphia. Wow. And urge all citizens to welcome Philadelphia's number one rated radio personality as he visits our city today. Well, That's let me beautiful. tell you, what a mayor. Boy, that is, you know. What a Captain Jinx. He set it up. Eh, who cares about Captain oh, yeah, Jinx? Exactly. It's the mayor who did they it. They trusted a dope like me to deliver right. this. Right. <laughs> wow, this is unbelievable, yeah, he Susan. he can't even drive. It might not have What an honor. Well, so Saturday will be there safely. And just think, I'll be in town on Saturday yes. for Howard Stern Day. Yeah, yes. isn't that interesting? That, that is Howard? terrific, yes. I also have this trophy here for you. What, what is, is it? it? Uh, actually, folks over at Classic Trophies in, uh, in Hapro, Pennsylvania, gave this to me to dedicate to you. This is a trophy for the greatest radio personality in Philadelphia radio history. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Hey, Susan, Finally I can't... Finally, some uh, awards. <laughs> you know, our own mayor here in New York has yet to acknowledge he me, even though I supported you. him. But he ignores me. But uh, when is the mayor up for re-election? I'll be sure to push for him. Uh, well, actually, Mayor Rendell just won re-election oh. this past November. Oh, he doesn't need years. us. Oh, was, good, so he doesn't the, need me. It was the <laughs> highest margin of a Philadelphia mayor since, like, the 1930s. Is that right? Yeah, he's, he's real good. And what an excellent mayor. You know, things have gotten much better since Mayor Rendell has been there. <laughs> well, listen, Susan, thank you. That's a real I'll honor. I look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah, I can't wait. And uh, why don't you and the mayor stop down so we can uh, have a photo op? That well, would be beautiful. All right, love to see you, Susan. Okay, great. All right, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, thank Susan. Bye-bye. And I will, uh, oh, thank you. I was going to say I would sign her top, but I better <laughs> oh, not. stop it. <laughs> Always go too far. Yes. Yeah, but everybody over Does any cash come with this honor, Robin? No. <laughs> when you have a Howard nothing, Stern day? Nothing oh. comes with that honor. Really? <laughs> you get to go to Philly. Wow. <laughs> well, it's nice for the mayor to to. <laughs> Give me this it's proclamation. It's certainly wonderful to be recognized, is fact, it not? I will bring my proclamation. What did I do with it? Is it in the right garbage? Here. Oh, thank you. All right. Uh, tell you? Do me a favor. I will bring that proclamation with me to Philadelphia, and it will be there That's at my book signing. the biggest city that has ever decided to honor you, Howard. Yeah, That's true. Howard. That is because, true. Because they have never honored anybody, any other radio personality. Oh, shut up, Captain Jack. Well, it's true. All right. Anyway, I'm listen. I'm simply you did sitting it. here thinking of, you know, every once in a while we try to do this when we go various places, and we have to find some small suburban area, you know, because right. the real city we're visiting won't well, honor. Us. Yes, we got, we got that guy from a suburb of Cleveland, and he almost got run out of town yeah. after he gave you the proclamation. I know. Well, the mayor is right. He recognizes that a lot of Philadelphians enjoy the show, and why not uh, recognize That's it? Absolutely the truth. Thing. Well, yeah. Captain Jenks, thank you for arranging for the. That is true. You are a true fan. You uh, had uh, Mayor oh, Rendell's office uh, do this for me, and that's very nice. And well, thanks I really to appreciate you know the honor that you gave me in the book, because really, I mean, I really don't think that anybody has ever honored me like that. I'm before. sure they haven't. I, I, you know, who would? I, well, I'm probably your only what? admirer. Yeah. Really, oh, man. Uh, that was that was like. Well, I mean, you deserved it. You've done a I lot really for the team it. here. You during the Debella Wars, you, you were, were right, right on our there. side. You, you drove him the crazy. Line. The book was great. My favorite chapter was the uh, governor chapter. What you said at the end of that chapter is basically the way I felt about it. That was the best time I ever had with the show so far. Uh, it was pretty wild. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I videotaped the whole thing, Did and uh, and CBS Television actually was going to make a special out of it. And I, the problem was I didn't have it all. You know, we videotaped it so haphazardly and stuff, but it is some of the best videotape that you'll ever see. Yeah. It really is. So I tried to capture all that stuff in the book. But you thank did. you. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It's a fun chapter. Running for office was kind of a, a nutty hoot. thing. It was kind of a hoot. Well, you got to run for president, Howard. Well, I haven't decided yet. After my book tour, I'll sit down with my you wife. You have to consider it. Right. Your family. That's right. Well, and I'll be supporting <laughs> you. You know I will. As far as being a soldier... You are number one. Why, thank you, As Howard. a human, 
You're a zero, but <laughs> <laughs> you're a good soldier. Yeah. And I thank you, Captain Jenks. And I'll see you on Saturday in Philadelphia at the book signing. I will be there, Howard. Yes, everyone will be there, and I will sign all the books. I've gotten the go-ahead that I can sit there for a while and well, sign. Well, I'm glad that everybody came around. Right. I asked DeBell if he was going to come, and yes. he, he said no. He should absolutely come. I think he should, I think, yeah. You know what it is? When Have I was you in... talked to him since the book came oh, out? Oh, yeah, many times. Not you. Not you, you midget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's talking to me. He's so hysterical. No, you, Howard. Have, Have you, you talked? No, I have not. Have you talked to him, Captain Jenks? Yes. You have. And what has he said? Well, um, actually, we were in pretty good conversation up until the day of the book release, and then mm -hmm. he kind of like I don't hear from him that much. I and, see. Well, I can understand, but you know, because it is, you know, he's got to relive that whole thing. The only guy who should be ashamed is you, Captain Jenks. Yeah. You have no job. You spend about three thousand dollars a month a in phone bills. I know you're in a gas station. Yeah. Did you go to college for that? <laughs> is wow. he better off or worse off? <laughs> what? <laughs> Since, uh, Making phony phone calls? Yes. Hey, He's a lot worse that. off. No, I'm a lot better off. Are you really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the Have you gotten laid yet? Yes. Oh, you did? Yes. You got a girl? Yeah, in fact, you know, this is really weird. At a book signing? Um, well, check this out, right? Yeah. Uh, some, uh, some, some guy, another guy in the radio in Philadelphia, Howard Stern ripoff. Yeah. Was, uh, was slamming Debella. Yeah. Right? And uh, DeBella, I spoke to DeBella, and he's like, yeah, what are you going to do? This guy's bothering me. What are you going to do? Right. So I called up this guy. <laughs> yeah. And I said, yo, man, leave DeBella alone. The book's coming out. He's had a hard enough time. Right. right. Is, you, you even know? felt bad for him. Yeah. Right. Well, I didn't feel bad for him, but yeah, I felt bad for him. Okay, go ahead. So the, the guy says, well, you know, DeBella was ripping me off a couple of weeks ago. And I said, hey, you rip Howard off. Every day. Yeah. And he said, he said, yeah, well, you know, it goes around in the business. That's what happens. I said, yeah, well, how can you say something about DeBella, if, you know, if you're ripping Howard off? Right. The guy goes, yeah, okay. So I told DeBella about it. And the guy says he won't never bother DeBella again. Now, this is what you do all day. This is why you're working at a gas station. That's why he can't have a job. Right. Because he's busy calling he's radio guys. radio relations. You're amazing. <laughs> so DeBella's so happy with this. He sends me... A hundred dollar gift certificate to some some uh, you know steakhouse in Philly. Really? Yeah. So I went down there. And I got laid that night. So you're yeah. kidding at the no. steakhouse? You took a girl yeah. out well, on this no, gift certificate? That. Well, after that. And you picked her up in, on your own? Did yeah. she know you were Captain Jang's? No, she she did she she's never. Is she attractive? A uh, beautiful. She's really? Never listened to the show before. And you're going Are out you with her still? Are you still going out with her? Well, she she moved to Atlanta, but oh, she's going to be God. coming back this weekend. She'll beat the book <laughs> signing on Saturday. She will be there. I will look her over on Saturday. I'll bring her down there, and you. And she taller than you? Oh, everybody is out. Right. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, that's interesting. Good for you, Captain Jace. How long had it been? I think you'd never gotten it. It's been a while. <laughs> had it? Yeah. How many years had it been? Uh, about, yeah, well, about a year. Wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, come on. Oh, come a on. year. Well, you know. Well, how would you like to be the girl... Who, who finds out that she was the first girl out of all females on the planet. Who wound up. Who wound up in bed with Jenks after like a seven-year dry she spell. She won the lottery. Yeah. She, she didn't complain. No? No. You did a good job? Yeah. Okay. That worked real hard. Yeah. You're very loving? <laughs> yes. I think I am. All right. You know? Well, that's fascinating. I'm only half evil, Howard. You did a good job today. I want to thank Captain Jenks. I want to thank you. Yes. Do and, you think uh, if he starts getting sex, he'll stop making funny phone calls? No. I don't think that'll ever stop. <laughs> as long as I got a hand. I think it's in his blood. I think it's his reason for being. <laughs> hey, can I do like a thanks real quick for everybody to help me set up the, um, no. the uh, proclamation? No, you cannot. No. All right. Let's uh, take a break. <laughs> okay, hold on. All right. And then we will uh, really, be back. Really, I got to do this. You got to do it? Do it. Do, do it. it on DeBella Show. <laughs> I won't go on DeBella Show. If go, you ahead. Me. go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I want to thank Mayor Rendell and the city of Philadelphia. Susan Siegel, uh, Fran Palmer, and my parents, Linda and Mike Cipriano. Uh, yeah, they're real proud. <laughs> yeah. Well, well you know. <laughs> what did they do? What did they do? They have, they have been totally supportive of me. All <laughs> yeah. this. And you got to know, with a kid like me, yeah. I mean, you know, That's what are you going to do? Easy. You're, not <laughs> quite, you're not such a kid anymore. That's the sad part. Exactly. How old are you now? I'm 29. There you are? I'll be 30 in a couple months. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but see, you know. I don't know. Somehow it seemed okay when he was 21 yeah, doing yeah. this. I had a woman call me. I won't give her name on the air, but. She's going through a messy divorce. She said, do you, she read the book, and she mm -hmm. said, do you think Captain Jenks would make some phone calls for me to my ex-husband? Yes, absolutely. I said, uh, what do you mean? And she says, you know, harass him on the phone. So I said, uh, you know what, I don't want to get involved I in mean, anything that like legal? that. I don't think no. so. <laughs> Uh, I'll do it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean I'll tell you, it's not the first into some kind of a job. Or, that would not be the right. first time that somebody asked me that. A bunch of people, uh -huh. all the affiliates, have called me at one time or another and said, "You got to call the competitor. You got to right. call the." I know they've all tried to get into bed with you, but it's got to be something you feel. I'll yeah, get, like I'll you only felt get into bed. Mark and Brian, right? Know? Oh, they were the fun. They're, I mean, Debella was the best, but Mark and Brian were the second best. If you find uh, Captain Jenks' life fascinating, read about it in my book, as long <laughs> oh, yeah. as well as the other phony phone callers, yes, which I think yes. is the best chapter oh, in yeah. there. Well. But that's my opinion. Well, you know, you know I mean, whatever always flashes in my mind when you say that the king of all song parodies. Oh yeah, absolutely. That picture. Yeah. You know, when you I first all those guys, them. the pictures are worth 
<laughs> worth the whole price of the book. Oh, yeah. Tell you. But see, the whole thing is about all those guys in the book, you know, I mean, King of Cable, uh, King of Song Parodies, Apostle of Phone, of course, I mean, all of them, you know, each and every single one of them have, have contributed, you know, to, to, you know, I mean... I have How long have you been here? Why? Ah, Jesus. He's still on the phone. I don't know. You can't talk in no, but person. Everybody, but everybody what in is that your chapter point? has, uh, everybody I think in Are you that complimenting the other phony phone calls? Absolutely, yes. man. Because, I mean, you know, I mean, they have all supported me. All right, I'm very good. You know what? This is this is absolutely absurd. I, absolutely. I can't get caught up in your world. I cannot get caught up in your world. Who cares? Uh, each one of them have contributed to all me. Of great, man. All, all of them are great. Yeah, we know that. I say that in the book. Well, I say right, that. Thank you, Captain James. <laughs> I say that. A kook. <laughs> all the phony phone calls like are great. The they are great, club. and that yeah. chapter's great, and thank you it's for... Like the, it's like the new Captain James. He's like, you know what it is? Like a mafia guy in the beginning has to be ruthless, and then when he gets very powerful, he can stop being so ruthless. Yeah, he's a little old. He's getting fat. Yeah, he's... Philanthropic. Wait, who's getting fat? And then Captain Jenks, you know, comes on. He wants to acknowledge the other phony phone callers. Yeah, absolutely. Don Rickles singing at the end of his show. Now. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Well, what they're doing in a sense is paying, you know, is, is paying, paying tri tribute to me. To me. Yeah. Right. So, okay. you know, I mean, I mean right, and good. I love them all, yeah, you know, good. so. Sure. Yeah, right. All of your followers. In this accident. Oh, Howard's followers. In this accident, them, you know. your head hit the window very hard? Yes. <laughs> All right. Maybe that's what happened. All right, Captain Jenks, I'll see you in Philadelphia Absolutely. on Saturday. We'll, uh, we'll be back right after these words. Thank you, Captain Jenks. So, Jenks, you glad you did this? Are you kidding me, man? I... It, it was a privilege and an honor for me to present an award on behalf of the city of Philadelphia, Howard. Yeah? Absolutely. So does this make you, like, in with the mayor's office and stuff there now? I hope so. <laughs> do I have connections now or something like that? Yeah, like, do you have connections now? I hope I do. Yeah, because of Howard? Howard is responsible for everything that happens with anything that I have to do with entertainment. That's for yeah. sure. Because I've been working at a gas station. Right. Oh, I do.